Diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is the most common non-Hodgkin lymphoma that we see around the world. There's about 30,000 new cases diagnosed each year in the United States, and worldwide there's an additional 30 to 40,000. The only way to make a diagnosis of any of the lymphomas is to have an adequate biopsy. And this is something that's very important for people to understand. Having a small needle biopsy will often tell your doctors that there is a lymphoma there, but it won't necessarily say which type. Diffuse large B-cell lymphoma in particular has many different what we call biologic variants, and it's important to have a big enough piece for the doctors to examine. When we meet a person with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma and when it's first diagnosed, we have a couple of different steps we want to take. The first is to confirm the diagnosis by looking at it underneath the microscope. The second is to understand a little bit more about its biology by doing some special stains as well as a test called flow cytometry and studies of the chromosomes called cytogenetics or FISH. We then want to know a little bit more about how much lymphoma a person has, and so the standard of care is to do a PET scan or a PET CT scan that tells us where the diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is located. Once we have this information, we can start to put together some more information about what we call prognosis, which is our best guess as to how well that person will do. The goal of treatment is cure, and uh, while we try to cure everyone, uh, we do recognize that there are some uh, patients who may have higher risk disease and other patients who have lower risk disease. Uh, some of the things we look at in addition to the pathology is some blood work. In particular there is a blood marker called LDH, lactate dehydrogenase, not to be confused with LDL which is a type of cholesterol, but if the LDH is elevated um, that goes into our ability to, to provide a prognosis or how well somebody may or may not do. Uh, we do try to also put together something called an International Prognostic Index Score or an IPI score. And this takes into account five factors that we have available typically once we're done with our staging evaluation. So this includes a person's age if they're over 60, something called performance status which is a reflection of how much the lymphoma has debilitated somebody or not. We look at the LDH value. We look to see if the lymphoma is primarily in lymph nodes or if it's in non-lymph node structure, something we call extranodal, and then we look at the stage. By looking at these five factors, we can calculate this IPI, and again, this is a tool that is useful for uh, physicians to try to assign prognosis or risk to a patient. One thing I do want to emphasize is that using the IPI is really more of a guide. It's not always perfect when you're using it in an individual patient, but it gives an idea of the overall aggressiveness or risk of the disease. One of the most exciting parts of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is the recognition that there are multiple disease types hiding within that one diagnosis. So in other words, when we look at this particular lymphoma underneath the microscope, there are genetic changes and other factors that we can't see even with our best microscopes. And so new tools that have been developed include something called gene expression profiling, or what's even more exciting and useful on more types of tissue, something called nanostring. Some of these genetic tests can tell us what subtype of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma a person might have. And again, this is very helpful both in understanding the risk of that person's lymphoma in terms of response, as well as in the future, our ability to have individualized treatment for different subtypes. All diffuse large B-cell lymphomas are blood cancers and therefore the treatment for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is chemotherapy. The current standard of care is to have two main ingredients, something called an anthracycline uh, and something called immunotherapy. The anthracycline is doxorubicin and the immunotherapy component is rituximab. When we think about treating diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, the, the most common combination that we use and the standard of care for most patients is a combination of five drugs called RCHOP, R-C-H-O-P. For some lymphomas that have high risk features or for a particular type of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma that occurs primarily in the mediastinum, which is the middle part of the chest, we will often use a more intense type of chemotherapy that includes both that anthracycline as well as the immunotherapy, something such as dose-adjusted EPOC-R.
So diffuse large B cell lymphoma, the goal when we first meet people is cure, and we use the RCHOP or other more intense treatment combinations to try to get there. However, not everybody is cured with our treatment the first time around, and when it comes back, we have several different options. If somebody is young enough and healthy enough, we'll give them something called salvage chemotherapy, which is the term we use for a, a different kind of chemotherapy than the RCHOP. And if the disease responds and goes into remission, we can do autologous stem cell transplant. And that gives us a very good second chance to cure the disease. Sometimes people are not eligible for a transplant either because we can't get the disease under control or we, they, may not, uh, they may be uh, older or have other illnesses that make the transplant too high risk. And for uh, patients who have their lymphoma come back after a stem cell transplant, these are patients where our first goal really is to try to find an appropriate clinical trial for them. This is an incredible time when it comes to new drugs. There's a number of different agents that are being developed and that are available in the lymphoma pipeline. Some of these are monoclonal antibodies that may be stronger than rituximab or perhaps work in a slightly different way. Some of these antibodies are linked to almost like a Trojan horse delivery of some type of toxin. And we also have the new generation of what we call oral kinase inhibitors. These are pills that people take and they selectively block some of the pathways that lymphoma uses to grow. Uh, not all of these kinase inhibitors work in all different types of diffuse large B cell lymphoma and so what we're really trying to work on through clinical trials is finding the best drugs for the or the right drugs for the right patient and then also developing some combinations. And in addition, there's also, um, in addition to the monoclonal antibodies, the kinase inhibitors, there's an entirely new field of immunotherapy that's being developed where um, there are drugs that block or somehow affect the way that the immune system recognizes diffuse large B cell lymphoma. So I think this is an area to keep our eye on for the next decade. For diffuse large B cell lymphoma, it's natural to want to try to find combinations. These are very complicated lymphomas, they're very aggressive, and I think it makes sense to use different drugs that work in different ways so that we can try to get a better remission, a deeper remission, and a longer remission. Some of the combinations that are particularly exciting right now are combining, for example, immunomodulatory agents like lenalidomide with different uh, monoclonal antibodies, or looking at this field of CAR T cells, which is a way of using a person's own T cells to attack the lymphoma or to use a new group of immunotherapy drugs called PD-1 inhibitors, which again blocks some of the interactions between the immune system and the, the, the cancer. I think anybody with a diagnosis of diffuse large B cell lymphoma or any lymphoma is very well served by the Lymphoma Research Foundation. There's a tremendous number of resources available to patients, both in terms of support and education, and really a community. And I think that altogether, Lymphoma Research Foundation offers empowerment to patients so they understand more about their disease and can learn to cope with it.